This video is sponsored by Storm Sunder Heirs of Ruin Kickstarter. Hey friends, you're watching Squidmore Miniatures. I'm Emil, and today we're going to talk a little bit about that joy in our hobby and how we can make it easier for ourselves to get better at painting or just getting more miniatures done for the games that we want to play. We all get into this hobby with joy and excitement and we want to get better at things or we want to produce more minis and get more armies done. And sometimes the cold hard truth hits us. We realize that we have too many minis, we don't have enough time, maybe we are aren't really that inspired and we have to force ourselves to get stuff done and at least for me before I made this my daytime project job whatever you want to call it I was always looking forward to the time in the evening after the kids were sleeping I had finished all of my work and I could sit down for a few hours to paint my plastic toys number one setting up a painting space I know everyone don't have the luxury that I have to have a whole basement dedicated to your hobby. And for the longest time, I didn't either. I used to set up my painting space in my living room by the living room table and just had everything out by the painting desk to my wife's demise. And I had to build up and pick down the painting rig every time we had guests over. And this might come as a harsh thing, but it's really important. You need to give yourself a hobby space that makes sure that you have your hobby ready at all times. It's just super important that your wet palette, your paint brushes and your paints are always ready when you need them. You don't want to start your painting session by working 30 minutes to set up your painting desk before you can start painting. That gives you a big hurdle to jump over, creates sort of like a mental and physical block that you need to plow your way through to actually just start doing your hobby. It's just so much easier to watch The Witcher on Netflix than to build up a painting desk. So if you have a living room table, just set up a small space there where you can paint at any time. Just go sit down for five minutes if five minutes is what you have. If you can spare that or a piece of the kitchen table, then maybe go find yourself a cheap foldable table and maybe a tray or something so that you can just fold out the table and bring out your tray and in 10 seconds you're good to go to start painting. So that's my first tip. Give yourself something so you don't have to jump hurdles just to start with your hobby and you will find that you will enjoy the hobby a lot more and you will get a lot more hobby done as well. Paint less miniatures. This might come as a surprise as well to a lot of people and for people who only paint to play games, I guess this doesn't really apply. Painting less miniatures and instead painting the miniatures you paint with a purpose will definitely help you improve and will help you get through more miniatures. Because if you have 10 miniatures that you started painting on and you paint a little bit on them every week, you're never going to finish any of them because all of these projects are going to end up half finished or not finished at all. If you instead focus on painting one miniature and doing it with purpose, practicing how to finish leather and how to do leather better or really owning in on that skill of painting skin. You'll see a huge increase in skill quickly and also you will probably finish more miniatures than you did before. So unless you really have to paint a huge army, my recommendation is to focus on maybe one or two smaller projects. Maybe it's just a figure or two figures and finish those and then you go on to the next project. One of my favorite smaller projects are the Warhammer Underworlds Warbands, where it's three to eight figures. It's like a perfect size for me to paint in one go, but it's still the same project. And when I'm done, it's done. And I have a great example for those of you who wants to become better at painting and that is a guy called Paul Stockley. He's an amazing painter. He started at the same time as I did. I have probably painted 300 minutes since we started and I have no idea how many he painted but when looking at his Instagram I would guess it's more like 10. 15 miniatures maybe at most. Paul, you can probably correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but for every miniature he does, he practices something with a purpose. And every time he paints something, his level 
is just bumped up so much because he paints with a purpose and he practices with purpose. You need to have everything in your hobby within arm's reach. Once again, I know this might come off as harsh, but really, if you want to get stuff done and have more fun in your hobby, you don't want to create extra steps for yourself where you need to go up, go to a different floor of your apartment or house, bring out a box with some stuff that you need for a specific thing, and then go back down. And then when you're done with that, you have to go back up and, and put it away. You want everything to be as smooth and easy as possible. For me, I have this rule of my own that I actually got from Vince Venturella at Warhammer Weekly and that is arms reach. Everything that I use at a daily basis or even a monthly basis I keep within arms reach. I know that not everyone can buy these fancy hobby zone shelves that I have and that's totally fine. There are hundreds of different ways that you at no budget can make sure that you have everything you need at hand. When you're already starting to be tired for the day you want to make sure that it's easy for you to take the next step in painting and not create another one of those hurdles because otherwise if you come to that point where you need to set something else up in your painting or go get something in your storage room you'll probably just quit for the day and tell yourself that I'll fix this the next time I paint. One thing that I have that really helps me out with the setup that, that I have is one of these drawer units that I have underneath my painting desk so for the things that I don't use every day I have them just underneath the painting table ready at hand so if it's weird basic materials or papers for my wet palette for example all that stuff I have ready available when I need it and here's a short sponsored message Storm Thunder Heirs of Ruin is a fast-paced 1-4 to four player cooperative RPG board game with fast-paced skirmish combat. With a Kickstarter funded in just a few hours, it's a game with over 100 smashing miniatures bound to give you up to 300 hours of campaign gameplay. Storm Thunder is a game about escalation and challenges, and as you're building your character with custom decks based on your class, race or faction, you also have to balance it with your damaged armor from the last fight where the end enemies torn your suit of armor into pieces, making the next battle even more deadly. And one can really tell that a lot of focus I've been putting into the character development and into the miniature design. I was sent a few early prototypes of the miniatures and I can only agree with this statement, the miniatures look really really well designed. So if you're interested in learning more about the Kickstarter Storm Thunder Heirs of Ruin, it's live for a few more days and you can follow the link in the video description down below. Clean your hobby space. This might come up as a joke to you, but really, I am your mom. Well, not really, I guess, but <laughs> I cannot state enough how important this is. Having a clean painting desk is just as important as having your paints available. Because if you have a messy desk, it's going to create these obstacles for you to paint and have fun in your hobby. If you have to plow your way through your table just to get to the paint you want or to get the brushes you have, well, for one, your brushes are probably gonna break because of all the stuff on your desk. And secondly, I know how the human brain works. If you have a messy desk and you don't know where stuff is and it's hard for you to fit the stuff you need, you're probably going to have a bad time while you're painting and it's going to make it harder for you to do your hobby. So for me, what I like to do to keep my desk clean is either if I'm finished painting for the day, I like to put away all the paints and all the colors and all the tools that I've used. And if I'm too tired to do that after that specific session, every time I walk past my desk, I put something away, I clean something away. That way I never build up these huge piles of things that I need to do to get through to my painting desk. And I think that's a great way of looking at it. Just doing one small thing is better than kind of just leaving everything and telling yourself that you're gonna fix it later. It's just a wonderful thing to be refreshed when you sit down by the painting table, you get inspired instead of drained out because of the mess in front of you. Sell your miniatures. A clean mind is so good for being productive in creative things and productive in your hobby. And what do I mean by this? Well, I know for a fact that all of you who have been in the miniature hobby for a while have more miniatures 
than you've painted. You have a large army sitting in your shelf, or maybe you have a lot of display miniatures that you want to paint at some point. But here's the hard truth. You're not ever going to finish all of these 500 miniatures in your shelf. And what do these miniatures assembled or in boxes do with you? Well, they create some form of stress. Unless you're superhuman, then I'm sorry this doesn't apply to you, but having all of these miniatures and all these projects running that you want to do or you feel at least like you have to do them at some point in time will drain your energy and your excitement for doing the hobby. And it will also keep you away from focusing on the thing you want to do now. So my recommendation is to give yourself a framework. Maybe you have a framework of if I haven't touched this army for a year, probably should sell the miniatures because I'm never going to finish them. Maybe it's two years or five years or it's half a year or you just know for a fact that I will probably never be able to finish these minis then sell them. There are hundreds of people who want your army at this very moment. And the same thing goes for display miniatures. Like, unless you have a emotional connection to your miniatures, selling them, even if you don't get the same amount as you paid for them, will probably be better for your mental health and will help you to be able to focus on the projects that you're working on right now. At least for me, I know that it helps. Every time I sell something, I feel like I've accomplished something and I get really excited about finishing the things and the projects that I have in front of me at this very moment. Paint better miniatures. I often get asked on how to improve your miniature painting skill and a lot of these questions I get are from people who send me photos of miniatures that are not very good. I don't mean that the paint jobs are any good, but the miniatures themselves. A lot of the miniatures we can find out there are not the best sculpts or like in the case of Games Workshop, I love their miniatures, I love their sculpts, but they're often specifically made to suit their painting style. And this makes it really hard for people to learn how to paint things and learn how volumes works and shapes of things. And this does not just apply to Games Workshop, but Mantic have the same problem. A lot of the 3D printed stuff that you can get online it has the same problem. It's made to 3D print well, but it's not really made for painters. So how can you select better miniatures? Well, broaden your view a little bit. Maybe try painting miniatures that are a little bit bigger in scale and they're sculpted by sculptors who actually know anatomy and knows how a body works and knows how different materials work. And if you have a miniature that helps you to paint well instead of a miniature that you have to work around to make it look good, you will see quite quickly how your skill improves. And this was definitely true for me. I have learned so much by by being a little bit more selective in what miniatures I decide to paint. Not to pick miniatures that I have to work against, but actually miniatures that helps me become a better painter. Maybe we can get some suggestions in the comment section if you as a painter have ever come across this problem where you feel like your miniatures aren't good enough for what you want to accomplish. And maybe you have some suggestions of miniatures that you think are amazing for learning how to get better at painting different things. Better tools. I cannot state this enough. This so much adds up to the other things that we talked about today. How to make things more fun in your hobby, how to make it easier for you and not work against you, and that is getting better tools. The first and obvious thing is get a good brush. I can't address enough how important it is to have a brush that helps you understand the flow of paint, that helps you follow the different shapes of the miniature instead of you having to kind of work around it. So just picking up one Kolinsky Sable brush or something like that will really boost your confidence in painting and, and this comes up so much in our Patreon discussions where people try out their first Kolinsky Sable brush and they are just in awe of how different the painting process becomes because it's just so much easier 
easier and so much more fun to paint with. Another one of these tools that I really recommend you to have is a wet palette. Make one at home or whatever, but having good tools will help you become a better painter and have more fun while painting. And the same thing goes for airbrushes, for example. I've had friends who bought these $20 airbrushes and a $15 compressor and they never use it and airbrushing is no fun. They don't enjoy the process of airbrushing instead of picking up a decent one. It doesn't have to be the most expensive one. I'm not asking you to go buy one for $500, but getting one that works and works the way you want it to work is just so important. So that's today's hard truths. I hope you had a little bit of fun with me today. It really helps me a lot to actively think about how to make my hobby more fun and less of a chore. I want to cut out all of the chores from my work and just have more fun. If you're interested in checking out today's sponsor, of course, check the link in the description. And if you like this video and had fun, like, subscribe, feel free to leave comments, talk with people in the comment section, and maybe tell us about your experiences in the hobby, what makes your hobby hobby life easier. If you want to support this channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that. On my website squidmar.com I have listed all of the stuff that I use every video and that's for the cameras, the airbrush, the paint brushes, the paints on my website squidmar.com. If you follow any of those links, Amazon kicks back a little bit of money to this channel. So it's a win-win, you get stuff you need and I get to run this channel as my daytime job. Another way of supporting this channel is by joining me on Patreon, supporting a few dollars every month, like all of these, I think it's 267 people, <laughs> which is awesome, who uh, support